So we're now day six of Ivy's adenoidectomy and tonsillectomy. I'm pretty sure they put them together anyway, so adenoid tonsillectomy. I don't even know the word. Um, and as everyone had prepared me, day five and day six has definitely been the harder days of them. Just with the pain, um, it's starting to hurt a bit more now. I've had a look in the back of her throat and it's like you can see the scabs and it looks a bit gross. But um, other than that, she's been a bit of a trooper. So I've had a lot of questions come through asking me um, what happened and why. So I thought I'll do a quick little video on it all for you. All right. So Ivy has inherited her father's allergies, bless. Um, she has allergies just like uh, Indy has allergies, I guess, and pretty much the rest of Australia has allergies, except for me. I don't have allergies. Um, and Ivy is constantly got a dripping nose. So you'll probably, if you see photos or anything of her, you might see scabs or redness around the bits of her nose because she's always just sticking the fingers up her nose. Um, our biggest thing with Ivy, so we went to the ear, nose and throat doctor, Dr. Thompson, um, about two years ago because her tonsils were really big in the back of her throat. And they were concerned that if she had gotten tonsillitis, touch, she's never had it before, thankfully, but if she had gotten tonsillitis, it would have actually swelled really badly in the back of her throat and they were concerned for how her breathing would be. So we got on the list, the public list, to get her tonsils taken out. We waited, I think it was six months or something, the waiting list. And then he asked to re-see her because he had, he was fully aware that she had actually never had tonsillitis and we were only doing the surgery as a just in case kind of thing. And he wasn't comfortable to put her under um, general anesthetic if we didn't need to. So I totally understood that and respected that. So we just left it. But um, as Ivy got older, she had started, um, snoring she doesn't sleep with her mouth shut she only breathes out of her mouth not through her noise her through her nose um and i think that's because her adenoids are really quite big as well and uh, we went to the dentist and she the roof of her mouth was starting to um so when we sleep from my understanding is that we sleep when we sleep our mouth shut our roof our mouth oh my god our tongue sits on our the roof of our mouth and that's what Kate like makes the I don't know what it is the arch in the top of your gum. Ivy's were starting to get really like high because she wasn't sleeping with her mouth open with her mouth shut. So like <sighs> there was nowhere like her tongue wasn't molding the roof of her mouth so her teeth were going to start to as her adult teeth would come through would start to come out a bit mongy. Um so we got another referral from the dentist who said her tonsils were actually in the top 10 biggest tonsils he had seen and he had been practicing for a few years. So he gave us a referral for one in Sydney. So we went down to Sydney and um, the ear, nose and throat doctor down there, I forget her name. And she was lovely. And she's like, look, we really need to get them wrong out. And she started naming off things. And I'm like, wow, Ivy can't do that. Like Ivy can't eat steak. Like she won't eat steak. She chews her food for so long. She still wets the bed. She um, she always wakes up really tired and groggy and all these other things she was listing off and the doctor was saying is that these are because of her tonsils are so big. She's not sleeping through the whole night properly. She's not um, breathing properly. Um, it was always, it was actually really crazy. Like even from the jaw of her mouth is starting to, was starting to come out because of her tonsils. It was just, it was weird. And I'm like, wow, like that actually, there's a, a few issues that do come from having large tonsils. So she gave us the bill and everything like that. And we aren't in a private health 
fund, which we should be, and we will be after this, um, it was going to cost us $7,000 out of pocket, which we could have done, like obviously not happily, not easily, I should say easily done, but we would have had to have been able to get a loan and work out money out some way if we had to do it. But um, because it was so expensive, I rang the doctor we originally seen in um, Gosford and Dr. Thompson has said, no, 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 bring her in and let's have another look. And he looked at her and he goes, no, no, they're right. We do need to get her in. So he fast-tracked fast tracked her. I can really not talk at the moment, probably because I'm not sleeping through the night myself. Um, he put her pretty much straight through. We were on a, I think we waited a couple of months and then he took it straight into the hospital and we got it done. So last Friday, Ivy went into the hospital and the best thing I had done is I bought her a Brave box. And in that Brave box, there was coloring in books, pencils, textures, a couple of LOL dolls, um, a pair of pajamas. So she was really actually excited to open that box. She got wheeled into theater, I think. We had to be there at 6.30. She got wheeled into theater by 7.30 and Nolan had taken her through this time because I've taken Aiden in before and to be quite honest watching your child go under in like a induced sleep it's not for the faint-hearted um it is fine when they start with and they put the mask over them but then their body starts to fight towards the end and it looks like they're having kind of like a like a seizure but they're totally okay they're totally safe it's just their body natural way your body reacts like it jerks like no I don't want to go to sleep why are you making me sleep but she was fine so we fast forward she came out she was really upset and in quite a bit of pain when she first came out um, in the recovery once we got that all sorted we took her back to the children's ward and she was fine she was eating sandwiches and jumping around and playing and having the time of her life and I'm sitting there going I thought you were gonna be tired I thought we would rest and watch some Disney movies and no nah. She played and ate and played and ate. And at 8.30 at night, I am begging her, come on Ivy, please, it's time to go to sleep. Like we need to sleep. Um, throughout the night she was fine. And she came home the next day and she's been fine ever since. Like she woke up a couple of times now. She's woken up with a sore throat, which is completely expected. And I'll just give her some pen, uh, Panadol. Um, where I managed to keep the stronger pain relief for like things like yesterday and today. So yesterday she came home from a friend's house, which is next door in absolute tears, like crying, like <coughs> coughing and all sorts. And I'm like, what is going on? And she's like, my, th my throat, my throat. So I gave her some Panadol and then it didn't last for too long. So I ended up giving her some heavier pain medication a few hours later. Last night she was up a couple of times with her arm um, with a sore throat so I'd give her more pain relief during then and just before she had said her throat is hurting again so this is the day five and day six which is to be expected um other than that she's been a true part she just eats what she wants um she can't go to dancing for four weeks so she's a little bit upset about that because she loves dancing um or acro as well and yeah she's just trying to keep her busy when she shouldn't be out doing too many things, but she just wants to do everything. So my biggest tips of if your children are, or child is going in to get their tonsils and adenoids removed, um, is to get a Brave box. It was just, I don't even have the box with me. I'm just, I think I threw it out. It was just a white box and it just had a couple of in books, some connected textures, some pencils, a couple of little LOL dolls and pajamas. When they come home, keep up with the fluids and also keep up with the Panadols every four to six hours. So they can eat whatever they want. They suggest them to eat whatever they want. Um, and just, oh, put them in your room. The first night you're home, we put Ivy on a mattress in our room. So if she woke up during the night, we were just there and we were able to help her straight away, which is the same thing we did for when Aiden had his out as well. The funniest, no, no. The biggest coincidence, I don't know if it's coincidence or because she got her tonsils removed, she has not wet the bed once and she has not got a dripping nose. So I don't know if that's because it's all swollen up in the back of her nasal passages and everything at the moment that her nose isn't dripping like allergy drip. And 
that's why. Or um, she hasn't wet the bed, which is strange because she's such a heavy bed wetter. We have not had one wet bed. And even stranger, we've gone, she came into me the other morning at 3.30, starkers. So I think the pain relief is making her take her clothes off during the night. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's not all doom and gloom. It's it's actually quite good for the kids. They recover quite easily. It's not as painful for them. It is day five and six that I've experienced now through Ivy. It wasn't so bad with Aiden actually. He was never, not an issue, but Ivy is at day five and six and is in pain. So I'll get her and you can have a chat and see what she thinks. How do you feel about having your tonsils out? You're meant to look here, I think, not up here. Um, you ready? Good. Good? Did it hurt? Yeah. When? When did it hurt? It didn't hurt you at hospital, did it? Yes. It hurt me when I woke up. When you woke up, it was quite painful, wasn't it? But <laughs> it hasn't really hurt until the last day, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah? You super brave? Yeah. Yeah, if, some, if a little kid was to go get their tonsils out, what would you say to them? Good luck. And what else? Would you give them some tips? What are some tips? Mm, give them a hug. Give them a hug? Yeah? Say I'll make you a surprise. A surprise? And what else? Mm. What about a brave box? Did you love your brave box? Yeah. Was that the best one? Yeah. Yeah? And that they'll get better soon. And what can they eat? Mm, ice blocks. And what else? Jelly. Jelly? You don't even eat the jelly I made you. I made her jelly and she doesn't eat it. Then they could eat jelly and custard. Jelly and custard, which she also doesn't eat. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. And you're getting better? You're getting better. And you'll talk soon. And I'll talk soon. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.